Hey everyone, Lance back again with another video. Um, it's been a long time. I was looking uh, through some of my past videos and realised it's been it's been over two years <laughs> since since my last video unveiling the the S two thousand, the Wheeler Dealers S two thousand that I that I purchased. So a lot has happened since then. Uh, life got in the way as it typically does. And uh, I just wasn't able to record videos. I was, I was, my day job took up a, a massive majority of my time, uh, so I was focusing on that. But recently, I uh, I resigned, and now I have some more free time, so I can get back to working on cars, which is what I enjoy. And hopefully, with that, there'll be some content to come. But for this video, I thought what I'd do is give you an update of what's happened to the. The cars that, that that were on the channel over the past two years um, and where that's at and at the end of the video uh, just quickly go over what what's next so uh, where should we begin I think what we had last time was we had the the last video was unveiling the s2000 or going through the rest the s2000 that I purchased and we also had a Jaguar f-type um, good news is I still have both of those cars and um, I've been falling in and out in love with them uh, for reasons I'll explain. What we'll do is we'll go through the S2000 first, then we'll go on to the, the F-Type. So let me share some images. Unfortunately, I didn't record any of this stuff. Uh, but what I can show you is, is the car themselves. So this is how it looked uh, last time we spoke. My, my goal for the S2000 was to basically get it back to its original state almost. And and maybe, you know, maybe keep a couple of the mods that would run to it, the tasteful ones, you know, make sure it runs properly uh, and just use it. I mean, it's done 147,000 miles, right? So it's not going to be a concourse car ever, you know, but it's something I can use guilt free. Um, I can, you know, work on it myself and any repairs nine times out of 10 are not going to be like, you know, uh, financially crippling touch wood. But this is how it looked last time we met. Um, and just a quick recap, it had 17 inch alloys on it. Um, it had a Takeda re um, intake. And I think, you know, that, that you know, it had the, the front fog lights as well, which were not, not standard. And that was it, the interior had loads of stuff done to it as well, like added leather, the, the AP2 style um fa you know fascia it had an aftermarket stereo or subwoofer after aftermarket speakers and all that gumph um led lights in the footwells and all that jazz uh it, it felt a bit it felt a bit midlife crisis type thing <laughs> and i don't mean that in a nasty way it's just it, you know the person who had it before me obviously loved it a lot um but it just wasn't for me so uh from there where do we go next yeah that's how it looked uh, yeah, that was the interior. Not a great image, you know, leatherette on the, the center console, aftermarket stuff, and all that jazz. I took it to my first um, show or event, which was really cool. Uh, it was a, an on grass thing, um, a classic car show, which was good. And then I got work. I got to work doing servicing on it. And this was the, you know, once you get it up on jack stands, take all the wheels off, start getting underneath it um, and start probing, you know, cars that are 20 odd years old, they'll, they'll start to show you, you know, some of their barrel scars. So in this instance, what did we have? We had a, you know, rusty crash bar underneath for the most part looked okay. The brake lines and fuel lines were really, really corroded. Um, so I knew that they would need doing soon enough. Um, and the, the, the rear brakes were starting to uh, bind slightly. Then, um, when I took the spark plugs out, the, the spark plug seals on the rocker cover had deteriorated and oil was starting to get into the spark plug holes. So I, I removed the rocker cover completely, um, new seals, new rocker cover, crackle painting, you know, in the red crackle painting, new seals, that went on and it had a full service, you know, new coolant, um, oil, uh, spark plugs, uh, a cleaner, the filter and pollen filter. 
so that is a picture from that experience painted the crash bar as well just to mitigate some of the the encroaching rust and then i also removed the aftermarket fog lights that were installed which was a bit of a nightmare to be fair uh, ap1 style bumpers have uh, you see those holes on the left and right uh, where the fog lights in this instance were on the old style bumpers they they're they're capped with like um, a black plastic for all intents and purposes in this instance they were cut out um, and the fog lights were put in after removing the fog lights there was loads of um, I guess gunk and crust and and glue adhesive um, which, which was holding them on but unfortunately the plastics were completely cut out which was frustrating because that would mean a new bumper or a you know a second hand bumper and it would need respraying because Imola orange is a very rare colour. So trying to find a good bumper in that particular colour to just straight fit onto the car was, you know, so you'd be playing a very, very long waiting game. So um, I still thought it looked better without the fog lights, but it obviously needed attention. The, the 17s were aftermarket. Still have them. They're in the garage. Uh, they came off. I bought a set of um, AP1 style wheels, the the non um, the non diamond polish versions, and I wanted you know with the F with getting the F type at roughly a similar time, the F type had some has some really nice um, I think it's called I want to say it's Land Rover Stornoway Grey um, alloy wheels. And I was like, oh, I really like that color. I think it will look really good in the S two thousand. So I got the wheels. And it got them refurbed and got Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's all around. Um, and yeah, I, th I think, you know, this is not a great photo. You'll see some of the photos later. But I thought it looked, it looked good. Um, then um, I took it in for its first MOT. And uh, disaster struck. So the, the F-Type and the, the S2000 went in for the MOT at the same time. The F-Type passed, you know with with flying colors um no advisories the s2000 no the <laughs> the gent who was doing it was in and, and I, I have a feeling he was um trying to prove himself he was a young young gent <laughs> and the list was massive um it, it seemed like every bit of corrosion that was on the car was pointed out despite it only being small um so the only thing it failed on was um the rear the rear brakes were binding both sides and from the sound of things it need it needed new calipers at the rear um so it stayed because i was busy with live stuff it stayed off the road it sawned it for a while it was winter as well winter was coming up as well so i just put the cover over it and left it off the road for a bit um time passed uh, this is a, a a new photo of it so what happened since then you can i i, I stripped the interior I got rid of all the aftermarket mods on the interior. Um, factory head unit got reinstalled. Um, in the, the the standard fascia plate uh, got a new centre tunnel because when I removed the leatherette from the, the centre tunnel that was there, um, it, it destroyed what was underneath it. Um, despite my best attempts, it looked like it was already bad beforehand. Um, so I replaced the centre console. <clears throat> um, got rid of the the shifter and the the, the leather gate the, the the aftermarket gator they had restored you know re returned that to normal um so yep the interior is fine again it's a 20 year old car it shows its age but it, it, it was looking fine i polished the headlights um i replaced the rear calipers in the rear uh, got new brake pads all around uh, what else did i do um the brake lines um the only thing was, is when I replaced the calipers, like I said earlier, the brake lines and the fuel lines were pretty crusty. I knew they were going to be need doing soon. Um, when I was bleeding the brakes, my girlfriend was in the car. She was putting a foot on the pedal as I was doing the bleeding. And unfortunately, one of the pipes exploded. So um, one, one of the pipes was just peeing fluid everywhere. I managed to seal it up. I had to cut it, hammer it flat. 
Um, I don't have the facility on my driveway, unfortunately, to replace brake lines. Uh, they're just a bit too deep on the S2000. So I got a quote for, I think it was £650 for all new copper brake lines um, all around. So I got that done. And I also paid for the, the fuel. I wanted the fuel lines doing at the same time. But unfortunately, the, the parts for that um, were on back order. And it's probably going to be a couple of weeks yet before those parts come in. I've paid for the work up front, um, all in all, for new brake lines, new fuel lines. And they're, a, they're genuine fuel lines and um, copper brake hoses. All that work was done, including an MOT, for, I think, just over a £1,000. And in my eyes, that, that that's worth it. They'll, you know, they'll last a long time. Um, and, yeah, the MOT pretty much clear i think that the only thing was the cor corroded fuel lines on it the uh, the brake lines were done the mot was done the fuel lines we couldn't get in time for the mot um you can't fail an mot unless the fuel line is actually leaking i believe so they they were fine that was the only real advisory off the top of my head maybe i think silk slight silk corrosion um near a sensitive area but i'll take a look at that in due time and i'll probably saw that myself and um, but yeah this is this is the way it looks now um i polished the headlights i as you can see there I replaced i got some aftermarket intakes which i hope people agree don't look too intrusive um again i didn't like this the thought of getting a new front bumper and, and doing all that jazz um i think this is tasteful enough where it's like you know, looks pretty OEM. So the gloss black um, uh, uh, intakes, they just plug in. They're brake ducts, essentially. Um, or, the, or therefore brake uh, ducts. Uh, but yeah, they, they fit in fine. Um, a bit of 3M tape, all cleaned up nicely. Like I said, polished the headlights. And yeah, the car is, is working a treat. We've done a few hundred miles in it over the past... 20 odd days um just taking advantage of the sun whilst it's here it's not been to any more shows yet but uh you know that might happen in future yeah that's the the s2000 on to the f type next so last time you saw the f type um again we did a video announcing it and doing a, a drive around if i remember right um for the most part for the first I'd want to say like 12 months of ownership. The car was amazing. Um, still looks great today. Took it again to a, a few uh, Jaguar enthusiast shows, uh, the Tatton Park show, which was cool. Um, Anderson Boat Lift uh, event, which was really sweet. There's a load of other classic and modern Jags. Uh, good times. And then about, yeah, about a year into ownership, I was starting to get a um, a lack of power, and then if you know if it was making its way up the rev range, rev range, it would um, it would splutter and pull power. After running the code reader through it, um, it basically said there was fuel pressure issues. Um, there was quite a few codes that pointed to different components, and unfortunately, one day, as you can see from the photo, it stranded me by the roadside. Um, about a quarter mile away from home so not too bad it had to be recovered though um, it did do this once before but it didn't leave me stranded leaving it for a moment um, it cranked uh, it was on a roundabout unfortunately enough which was very awkward um, but it sprung back into life and it got us home uh, and worked fine next time I went out in it which was just a, it was a I went out in it again to um, to to just assess the car to see, you know, is there a problem or anything like that? Um, you know, I put some fuel additive in, hoping it might clear the, clear the injectors a little bit. Um, but no, it died uh, going downhill. So that got recovered home. And my first port call was to change the fuel pump control module. And, you know, the, there's, there's a few in, in the, the line it's quite an, an intense fuel system on the the f-type r you have fuel pump control module you have a sender um that sends low pressure fuel 
down the car so there's there's pipes that run the, the, the length of the car um that feed into two high pressure fuel pumps that pump through rails into each bank well it they, they both supply each bank as um, if i remember right um but in bank one the fuel pressure was was low which is the first bank on the stop of the 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 fuel the fuel journey um after it goes from the, the high pressure high pressure fuel pumps and i, w I was hoping that was due to uh, an error code that I was getting which was saying the fuel pump control module had um essentially low voltage so i, I was I, I checked connections i mean this is quite an involved job i got a replacement one which you know thankfully came from the, the same year of car uh, again not a great photo but it, it involved me taking out the the seats the the fascias from the interior and going into the, the the you know taking off the firewall um that sits over part of the the uh fuel tank and replacing the fuel pump control module but unfortunately that do you know what that actually worked for about six months um and everything was hunky dory again and i was like thank god it's not injectors or something else but on a uh, a trip to liverpool uh, i was taking the missus out for a meal which unfortunately we never made it to and um, the car again broke down luckily my insurance covers all this so they came collected us and they they got it they got it back home again uh so yeah that was annoying and then like i said earlier uh with the the s2000 um the s2000 at this time was off the road it was storm it was winter it was in um uh, november december actually so you know coming up to winter i was just like i'll leave it i, I didn't really want to use these cars throughout winter anyway uh, i'll just take the the, the two some we have and just use that as a daily i work from home uh, at the time i worked from home um four days a week so you know the miles i was putting on it was very low um and we didn't we didn't you know the the mileage was spread across three cars anyway so we weren't putting many miles on this too so anywho um like i say life got in the way i was just grafting my work and the cars kind of just sat uh, up until the last the last month when the weather got better and i could do the work myself i got a quote to get this done um after replacing the fuel pump module, my next port of call was one of the high pressure fuel pumps. And I'll be honest, I wish I actually got it up on a ramp uh, or off the ground sooner to inspect the high, high pressure fuel pumps. That's hard to say. Um, high pressure fuel pumps. Because the, the, the issue would have been made evident. My head was was thinking, you know, is it injectors? That's super costly. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll have a go at that myself. Um and then I saw a post on one of the Jaguar forums where a gent, um, you know, replaced one of the high pressure fuel pumps, um, the number two pump. They're both on the same side. They're both the same, exactly the same unit. Um, he replaced it and he said, you know, it was fairly easy for all intents and purposes. And that inspired me to try and do it myself after I received the quote just short of a thousand pounds to get it done. I was like, Sh you know, if this guy can do it on his driveway, surely I can do it on it. And... and that proved to be, um, yeah, it wasn't as easy as I, I thought it was, nor did this post allude to. And the reason was because the post <laughs> was for an American car and they obviously have all their, their steering gear on the opposite side. So I got it up onto ramps and you this is at it back and assembled but zooming in here you might be able to see where my mouse is at the moment some cleaning there once i'd stripped it down and i could see this one of the high pressure fuel pumps um it feel, the seal was broken oil was coming out of it and obviously that was creating a pressure leak in the system so um that was that was kicking up all those error codes uh, you know, it could be it could be that the fuel pump control module was also getting bad voltage at the time, or, or the, the the module was gone, and that's why when I put a new one in, it was fine for for six months. But 
Either way, the seal here were broken. It was leaking some oil. Not a massive amount, but, you know, it, it was it was enough for me to want to replace it. So, it needed uh, the alternator taking off. I needed to get access to the both fuel pump modules. And it was the, the rear fuel pump module, module 2. Um, sorry, the high pressure fuel pump, uh, number 2. That needed replacing. Um, so, I needed to take the first one out to get to the second one and um, the part was around about 180 pound and you needed to do a, uh, an oil service on the car as well you needed to drop the oil so fine did all that uh, but what you might be able to see so getting the alternator out wasn't too much of a faff it was a bit annoying it needed um you know an extension on a very long ratchet but other than that that was fine getting the first fuel pump module out very easy but the back one, you might be able to see on the left, this is um, steering rack support. And yeah, there's, there was it was very, very hard. I had to use f feel as opposed to actual sight to go over to release um, the, the low pressure feed for that particular pump and also the, the, the screw keeping it in, um, the bolt keeping it in rather. So that all came out. Getting it back in was a nightmare as well, but it was all done and it worked perfectly. It's back on the road. It flew through another MOT, no advisories. Um, so both cars are, are done. Uh, they're, they're back on the road. They're being used, which is good news. So what's what's next? With the, with the F-Type um, being, you know, running fine now, um, it does need some work on the interior doing because I've had to remove a load of parts. Some of the clips broke, so I will need to take some of that out again and replace that. And the S2000 is going in for fuel lines. Um, I'm probably going to do, you know, a bit of a, a, a detail on it. And at some point, take the, the front brake calipers off and probably grind them down to, uh, to bare metal again and get rid of the orange paint that the previous owner put on. Um... But other than that, I don't think there's much going to happen to the S2000. I'm just going to keep driving it and enjoying it. I don't have plans to modify it or anything like that. And I, again, I say this now, I don't have plans anytime soon to get rid. So I'll be keeping, I, I mean, I own it outright, you know, so um, I'm cool to keep with it for the time being. Uh, and the F-Type, um, probably just going to keep it as is again. Um just fix some of the interior bits in fact the uh, relatively common problem the older the f-types get the when opening up the boot the the parcel shelf the the holders that um uh or the arms that hold the parcel shelf up have broke they just they decay over time and there's a couple of rattles and stuff like that in there that i'll probably need to address but nothing too too in depth thankfully but I have, um, you know, been doing, you know, what every car enthusiast probably does is go on YouTube, look for videos of car repairs and and and, and you eventually get to stuff like Copart or auctions. Um, so I, I signed up to Copart, £100, bam. And, and within a day, I'd won a lot. <laughs> um, I actually, uh, I, I bid on it just to see what the bidding process was like thinking there is no way i'm going to win that but i won it um it didn't hit the reserve but they came back with an offer and it was only slightly above the reserve um so yeah i yeah uh, I, I accepted it i thought why not and then it's due to be delivered today so what we might do in the next video is i'll go outside i'll do some recording i'll walk around the car show you what it is um i mean We'll see here what it is. It's a it's a Mazda MX-5 NC Mark III, um, whatever you want to say. It's the 1.8, and it's the soft top convertible. And these are the images from Copart. So, you know, if anybody's been on Copart, you know the images are absolute shite. So, let's just quickly go through them. Um, but yeah, this is it. It has a, an engine fault. <laughs> Um, it could be a plethora of things. Most commonly, it's either piston knock, 
um, which is quite an involved job to replace. Uh, nine times out of ten, people just engine swap that thing. Um, or it could be seals, um, which again is quite an involved job to replace. But, you know, we'll see. It's, it's MLT history is pretty decent. It looks like it's been owned by, you know, uh, a kid, which is fine. It's got an aftermarket exhaust. It's very sooty exhaust, so it's either just poor maintenance or it's um, it's pumping out some oil, I'd imagine. Um, the rear bumper looks balked. It looks like it's been sprayed, uh, but in in getting the car towed, um, it looks like they've cracked it. So a rear bumper will be uh, needed you know, second hand in this particular colour and decent shape. You're probably looking at around about £100, I would have thought. So, yeah, rear bumper, cloth interior. I mean, from the images I've got here, the interior looks fine enough. Again, low res garbage. Uh, roof looks relatively tidy on the car as well uh, in images. Past the, the MOT history on this is pretty decent for all intents and purposes. It's got an MOT on it till March 2025. I'm recording this on the, t the, the 28th of July. So a long MOT. Engine bay looks okay. That that could be corrosion on um, near, near the towers, but I would imagine it's more likely dirt. Um, so... Yeah, everything seems to be there from, from inspection on the image. It looks like the power steering and the brake fluid might be pretty pretty rank and need changing. And I know the the um, coolant reservoir is prone to cracking. I've owned one of these before, by the way. I've owned the 2-litre um, retractable, retractable hardtop version of it, um, which was a great car, and I did some some work on that myself. And that, you know, I did 20,000 miles on that car, no problem. So I am quite familiar with it. Um, what else? It's done 100,000 miles. It's got an engine light, as you can see. It runs and drives, so um, that's cool, at least. Some weird aftermarket aerial. Looks like it's broke. I think I still have the original aerial from my NC, which I'll probably just pop on. Um, slow car club isn't that the truth um, no window wiper okay you need to be careful not to use that uh, it's missing some trim bits it's you've got to be careful because this is a I think they call this colour is it galaxy grey you, you look at it from one angle and again these pictures are not the best and it looks light gray on top and then dark gray on the bottom so some of these images might be quite misleading i look at these and i think does it need a new side skirt as well has that been replaced and poorly painted um i think the the bumper has that's just too too stark a difference but you know the way these pictures are taken in the shade and you know when it's overcast day there's a building or something in the image which is causing the reflection to go go very dark it's hard to tell what does or doesn't need replacing um so yeah that's on its way so we'll uh, uh in the next video what we'll do is we'll we'll go outside we'll get on the driveway we'll have a look around uh, and we might di try and diagnose uh, if not we'll we'll just have a look around um and and see see how we fare Cool. If uh, you like the video, give it a like. Uh, a subscribe would be very much appreciated. So until next time, take care, have fun, speak soon.